Hello, this is Mark Tucker, and this is a multi-part tutorial series on APL that I've created just for the viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we'll be wrapping up our exploration of the container component. So let's get started. When we left off here, we were talking about um, how the components get laid out on, uh, on a viewport and, and how we can set some properties and affect that by setting um, some child properties um, that components get be when they become uh, a child component of a container. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit now about um, a new property called spacing. So right now you notice that each of these components are back to back to back or just you know, butted up once again uh, what, right up next to each other. If we were to set this spacing property here, then we'll get um, some spacing here, uh, 20 dp spacing here between the first and the second one. And uh, we'll, we can go ahead and do the same thing with uh, between the second and the third one. So we've got a little bit more spacing here. If I were to take that same spacing and add it to the first one, it's just going get, to get ignored. Um, it, it knows that it's the first component in, uh, in there, and it's going to just still keep things uh, wherever they were um, at the, the, the spot that they would be laid out based on the, the settings of the uh, justify content. So spacing doesn't apply to the first one, but we can set that on the, on the second and third one. So that's nice to give some, um, some extra you know, flexibility in how we lay out these components. Let's talk about wrap as the next one. So you notice how uh, these components, uh, you know, there's extra space on them. Let's, let's go ahead and bump this um, up a little bit. Instead of the box height being 120, let's go ahead and change that to 220. So we notice that, um, you know, depending on what uh, viewport we're on, then sometimes there's space left over, sometimes they're not. Um, let's go to something you know, really small. Uh, you know, obviously it, things are cut off here. So what the default property um, for wrap is set to uh, to no wrap. So that's the, the default property, so things don't wrap. Um, but if we were to set the property to wrap, then what it's going to do is it's going to say, oh, there's it's going to try to lay things out and it's going to lay out the first one just like we would normally would. If there's enough space, it's going to lay out the second one. And uh, if there's enough space, it's going to lay out the third one. If it hits a spot where there isn't enough space to lay it out, then it's going to go ahead and move that. Um, like in this case, it's laid out in columns, so it's going to lay out the first column, and then it's going to create a second column and lay that out. And it's you know, notice how it's following the, these properties for, for justify content and, and stuff. So. Like if we were to set this to start, then then we get this layout where you know things kind of start to look like a grid um, that gets that gets laid out with wrapping. So, and that same that you know same thing works regardless of of the direction. So in this case, there's enough space. If we were to start you know playing with the the size here of uh, the width, you know, the 220, there's enough space, 320, there's enough space, 420, or, yeah, 420, there's not enough space. Um, and you could change, you know, the, the size of the orange, like if we were to start to decrease the orange one to a certain point where it could fit on that row, it would do that. <clears throat> if we got to the point where, you know, it was so big, you know, like 650, okay, it, it can't fit more than one on, so it just stacks it up into, you know, one big column, even though um, things are specified as row. Um, and once again, that works the same thing over here. There was enough space to lay out one and two, uh, but not three. So that's that's uh, you know, how to understand wrap. Um, there is another option, um, though, and, and we're going to talk about that with, with shrink and grow. Um, at this point, we're going to uh, change the box height back to what it was before, 120. And um, the width we're going to change now to, to be a relative dimension, which is 100% <clears throat> of the area. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
let's say that we've got um, the, let's see how we want to lay this out. Um, we've got some space here and we've got some space here and we don't um, want that space. So let's go ahead and say um, that this last one we're going to grow. Um, and so what happens is it says it's, it's going to do whatever the height is and then just keep stretching the height to fill that extra space. Um, so that's one way to do it. And But let's say what if uh, that we also wanted this one to take advantage of the height. So remember, let's take a look at what it looks like without... Um, the grow set. So we've got this space here. In fact, let's go ahead and change this property here to um, ba -ba, to start. That way we get a little bit more idea. So we've got this space almost as big as one of the bands itself. Um, and we're saying that we want to grow this bottom one to take all of that space and we're going to grow this middle one as well to take that space. Now, how does this grow value work? It's just a value of one, but does it, what does it really mean? So what it's saying is, it's, yeah, what, it doesn't really matter what that value is if there's only one thing that's going to grow. It's just saying, I'm going to take whatever that extra space is and I'm going to use it and I'm going to assign it to this last frame. But if, if we have two of them, then we're saying both of these are competing for that space, um, but they both have the same value of one, and so it's going to lay that out proportionally. Now, this is a way that it makes sense to me. If we were to say that that space, um, you know, whatever the height of that space is that we're trying to, extra space is that we're going to distribute between these two, if we think of that um, as a fraction, then if we take this value for grow for one and add it to this value, because there's two children that both have the same you know, grow value, that's gonna add up to two. Um, that would be our denominator. And then if we look at the value just in this context here, this value is one over the denominator. So it's going to take half of the extra space that's left. And this is gonna take one over two or half of the space that's left here. So that should mean if we were to increase this value by two here, that this would get a little bit more of that extra space than the orange one, um, or this space you know, right here. So the way that I think about it, I, I, I think this is the way it works, um, is to say three plus one is four. So this is gonna get three fourths of that extra space, and this is gonna get one fourth of that extra space. So that's how um, grow works. And, and what it does is, you know, it works on whatever the viewport size is. You notice as things change, um, you know, get bigger or smaller, then um, the, those bands are changed uh, proportionally based on this grow value. So that's grow. Let's take a look at shrink. And the place that I use shrink quite a bit um, Let's do it in this middle orange band here. So like I say, if we were to just have one value here, that's gonna grow and take up that space. And so sometimes we've got um, like a header and a footer, and then we've got this like some area in the middle and we want that to take up the remaining space. We kind of want a you know, fixed or you know, proportionally fixed size for the header and the footer and then whatever there is left, we want that uh, middle space to take up. So grow can do that. Um, so it takes whatever the height is and then it just grows. Um, another way to do that though, is we could say we want to set the height here instead of uh, you know, whatever it was set here, we're gonna set the height um, for that orange section to be 100%. Let's see, oh, we got the, let's take the wrapping off, there we go. So it's gonna take 100%. Well, the blue is here, but it's just been pushed off the screen. So it's, you know, whatever the height is, I think we've got it as 120, yeah. So the box height is 120. Um, and so it's got box height is 120. It's gonna say 100% of the orange uh, of the parent size. And so then it's basically just pushed this blue part off the bottom of the, of the viewport where we can't see it. 
So this would be a perfect place to then use shrink. What we're gonna say is that we want this middle section to shrink. Um, and so you know, once again, we've got a fixed header and footer, for example, on that pink and blue band. But as we move to different uh, viewport sizes, you can see that the orange grows to whatever the space is uh, to fill that. So that's a, um, a great way to use shrink in, um, in your designs here. So that's um, shrink and grow. Let's talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> position. So uh, we'll change this back. There we go. Position. So well, like I've, I've said before that things are laid out, you know, in this order, uh, pink, orange, blue, even though they're um, sibling components, they're, they're, you know, kind of on that same plane. If you want to take something that's and put it, you know, take it out of that layer, um, then that's where you use absolute. So in this case, um, we've said that we want to take that pink one, the first one, and we're going to lay that down in an uh, absolutely. And so that's going to be laid down first, and it's kind of on a different layer than now the the other two frames kind of in sibling order. Um, so how do we know that the pink one really is uh, <laughs> underneath this orange one? Uh, we can go ahead and take uh, this property here and uh, for orange, uh, doo -doo, sorry, there we go. And we can change it to invisible. So now, um, we know that pink's there because the orange is, is there, but it's just uh, invisible and now it's there again. Um, so that, that shows that uh, you know, orange and blue are kind of on the same layer, but underneath it is the pink one. One of the things that you'll use that um, positioning for is a lot of times you might want to have like a background um, a color or something that you want to take the whole uh, background up and then you want to, to lay out the rest of your screen. So we can do that by taking this pink and saying we want it to be 100% of the parent, um, oops, 100% of the parent width, and we want it to be 100% of the parent height. And so now we've got the pink component that is taking up this whole space um, but on a, on a lower level than the orange and the, the blue are. So that's uh, you know, how you can play with uh, positioning and, and some additional things with the, um, the wrapping and shrink and grow. Now, we haven't covered all of the properties, and you know, there are quite a bit. Um, so I just want to point you to the documentation and a little bit of how that works. So in the documentation here is um, you know, everything that we want to know about the container uh, component. And it's the properties of the, the component itself, like we've covered align items, direction, justify content, wrap. Those are properties that are on the container itself. But then when you put uh, a child component uh, inside of that container, then you can look at properties like the align, top left, bottom right, grow, shrink, um, and the position properties. So um, that's good to, to understand that. There's also some properties that we get because it's part of a base component. So all components have some of the same base properties. So that's where we get items like uh, that description, which was just kind of a, uh, a way of uh, describing what each of the different components did. Uh, but the display property that we, we talked about um, <clears throat> height, width, there's an ID. Um, so these are some things that we can get um, off of uh, the base component. So that's where you'll find um, those in the documentation. And then if you want to you know, have a little bit more help in understanding how Flexbox works, which is what the container is based off of, there's a, a, a website here you can go to uh, that talks about the Flexbox implementation and allows you to play with some of the different properties. Um, so that is the uh, conclusion of this video. So in this episode, we did use the frame component to show off you know, the layout properties of the container. But in the next video, we'll explore more properties of the frame component. 
Um, I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. Um, and if it was, please let me know and uh, just with a like or a share. And thank you for watching.